button. And I am really pleased to uh, welcome to the stage Ali and Melissa with Handy Pro, who are going to share some resources, solutions, and ideas about grab bars. And before we get to know them a little bit better, I'm, I, 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 I have been, you know, um, a passionate advocate for solutions to make our home safe and accessible since I've been in this business 32 years ago. And it's, I have to say, it's one of these things. There's so much innovation. There's so many creative ways that we can make our home safe and accessible, but it's really challenging to get people to make these changes or to think about it before they need these improvements. And uh, most of the time when they wanna make these improvements, they're in the car on the way home from the hospital. And so um, I'm always brainstorming with professionals like Ali and Melissa. And, and this discussion on grab bars today was born out of a little conversation I had with Ali in that, you know, sometimes when we do these discussions on universal design and remodeling, we're talking about big, expensive improvements and, you know, contractors in your house for a few days and things like that. And I said to Ali, it's like, what if we just focused on grab bars? Because they're um, a lot of times that's the starting point. And, um, they're they're so important uh, to keep people safe. Um, and then that can kind of lead to more improvements. It also helps you develop a relationship with your contractor or or vendor to see what else might be done in your house over time. So uh, so I'm real excited to see where this discussion goes. Uh, a lot of these discussions are just one big experiment to see kind of what happens. but Sorry to babble on there a little bit, but uh, Ali and Melissa, let, before we dive into the grab bars, let's get to know the two of you a little bit better. Ali, I'll start with you. Um, um, your organization is Handy Pro, but tell us a little bit about what you do and what got you into this business. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Steve, uh, for this uh, very interesting uh, topic that you, you wanted to, to talk about it. And uh, I always talk about grab bars as a insurance policy which you don't need to renew it uh, so uh, it's just when you when you buy the policy it's there uh, till you're there and it's really it's a fraction I, I can't emphasize as a fraction what the cost that's going to bring if you don't have it and you have a fall uh, because of the lack of the grab bars um, uh, uh, my name is Ali Soltani and uh, I'm the uh, project manager with uh, Handy Pro and I'm also a SEAC certified which is the uh, consultant to to be able to modify and design homes for people with disability or people that they want to age in place. Uh, my background, I, I have a civil and electrical engineering degree and uh, always construction was been has been my passion and I, that's the only thing that I've worked almost. I've, I've done little here and there when the recession hit, but over 25 years experience in construction and uh, then uh, I had a passion to to help people and try to, you know, change people's lives so i came across to this business and uh was like that's a good match so it's a construction and also it's uh uh helping others and make changes in people's life which we see it every day that we do and when, when people get access to the part of the house that they haven't been there uh it's, it's really remarkable when when we see those smiles on people's face and or people that haven't had ch taken shower for a long long time and now they can take shower so uh, this, this, that's why I got into this business and I've been doing this for past nine years and Melissa uh, in, uh, recently, which is like about uh, I think seven, eight months ago that she joined our team. She's a certified occupational therapist and uh, she's been working in the, uh, you know, uh, occupational therapist business for a long time. She, she worked for the uh, MedStar for 11 nothing years. And uh, we were fortunate enough that she agreed to work with us and we are very thrilled to, to have her uh, as our team. Uh, I'll let her to, to talk about herself and uh, probably uh, we're gonna start a presentation that she's gonna talk about some more of, uh, you know, uh, from clinical side of the, uh, the why the grab bars are important. Uh, and then uh, I'm gonna talk about like more construction installation. And, great. And other part of it. No, that's great. Yeah, Melissa, tell us a little bit about your background and I know 
occupational therapists have really been essential in this aspect of um, of home improvement. Yeah, so we're just uh, occupational therapists are here to just kind of help the team, uh, you know, the team of engineers, craftsmen, uh, designers, uh, just to make sure that, that in, the individual, the person is, you know, at the center, listening to their needs, um, their wants, their desires, and how to make sure they are uh, safe and comfortable in their home. Uh, as an occupational therapist, we use something called task analysis. That's breaking down every little step, um, every little part of, of a movement, of an activity, you know, something like just taking a step, it seems like a pretty simple thing to do, but it's actually quite complex when you are, uh, you know, may have a little trouble with your balance or your strength um, or needs that extra support to hold on to. Uh, as far as body mechanics go and kind of where that force is going when you're moving forward or moving backwards or moving side, um, if you're sitting or standing as far as your reach, it's all different. Uh, it, so we are there to just kind of help and make sure that, you know, what we are uh, putting in place as far as grab bars or any other uh, type of home modification, uh, you know, it's being done with the client's needs in mind first. We're not providing products, we're provi providing safety and security. Great. For the individual this... as well as their family members. Excellent. Okay, well, let's dive into this uh, discussion. I think you've got some PowerPoints that you want to share. And uh, when you do that, I'm going to turn my camera off here and drop behind the curtain. I want to remind the audience that you can type in questions at any time. We've already got one from Mary Boosie that we'll, uh, we'll um, address. And uh, and then feel free to just check in with me periodically and we can uh, answer questions or you can just take a break um, and uh, looking forward to learning more about grab bars. Sure. Uh, screen looks OK. Yep, looks great. All right, great. All right. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we're going to take a in-depth look at regarding grab bars, how to make them your permanent house guests, and hopefully you will invite them to your home uh, sooner rather than later. All right, so uh, we're gonna discuss today some fun facts about falls, uh, talk about what, what is a grab bar, how do we make space for grab bars, why should we welcome a grab bar into our home? How do we make grab bars stick around? And what are the benefits of having a grab bar in our home for the individual that may be using it, you know, on a daily basis, as well as, you know, loved ones or family members staying in the home that may not think that they need it, but when the time comes where they do need it, it's right there kind of waiting for them right by their side. So most of us at some point have experienced or witnessed, you know, a fall. Uh, I'm sure we've all heard these statistics before, but I'm going to repeat some of them because they are very important. So older adults, typically 65 years young and growing or maturing, uh, experience a fall every second. 70% of falls happen at home. And one out of five of those falls, a, a serious injury occurs. So a serious injury could be a hip fracture, a head injury. And falls account for over 1 million emergency department visits over 800,000 hospitalizations and too many deaths to, to count. And so I'm not trying to, you know, scare you, but 
these facts are important because we want to be here to decrease those numbers. We don't want uh, our communities, our loved ones, our family members to become a statistic. We want these numbers to fall down. And one of the ways is to have these grab bars enter your home. In a recent study, I know a lot of times grab bars are typically thought about, uh, you use them in your bathrooms. Um, you've probably seen them, you know, maybe in your bathroom, in a family member's bathroom, or you've seen them when you've gone into, uh, you know, a department store bathroom or a bathroom at the grocery store. They're kind of all over the place. Um, and recently in a uh, a study for the, from the Journal of Injury Epidemiology, uh, falls are, are twice as more likely to occur in the bathroom than any other room of your home. So as far as falls go, it's extremely important to know what your risk factors are to prevent falls. Uh, there are many different risk factors. Some we're able to control and other ones we're not able to control. Uh, installing a grab bar, uh, welcoming a grab bar into your home is one of those factors that we can control. It falls under kind of home modifications or home redesign or home furnishings, which decreases, which can decrease your risk of having a fall or having a reoccurrence of a fall. Uh, studies out there show that if once you've had a fall, you are more likely to have another one, unfortunately. Um, vision changes, blood pressure regulation issues. I know a lot of times we think about blood pressure as, you know, being too high, and that's, you know, a risk for, you know, having a stroke or other conditions, uh, but also low blood pressure can cause balance issues and, you know, just not feeling right, dizziness. So making sure that blood pressure is regulated is, you know, a risk factor that we want to look at. Um, balance disorders that affects the strength and stability of your legs, hip, your core, as I mentioned before, age is another risk factor. Uh, those older adults, 65 and older, uh, are the age group that has that's at the biggest risk for falls. Uh, some chronic conditions affect your movement, uh, that brain-body connection, and your strength. Uh, you know, stroke, arthritis, Parkinson's, those are just a few conditions that can impact one's balance. Uh, there's also vitamin D deficiency affects your bone density and strength. We get uh, vitamin D from some foods that we eat, like salmon, uh, mushrooms. There are some cereals and uh, oatmeal that have fortified uh, vitamin D in them. Also, medication side effects. Uh, just kind of a, a lot of times a natural consequence of getting older. Uh, we sometimes are taking more medications. And so fatigue, dizziness, fogginess, those are all very common side effects from medications that can cause you to, you know, slip or lose your balance. Uh, there's also vestibular disorders, uh, which affects the small structures in your ear that kind of help your brain and your body kind of, you know, identify if you're sitting or standing or laying down. And sometimes sorry, when these, uh, Structures are kind of interrupted. That can cause, um, you know, some dizziness and increase your risk of falling. All right. So now that I probably gave you a headache from uh, talking about falls, because uh, I know, again, we've heard it so many times again. Uh, what we're here today is kind of to take an in-depth look of how grab bars can prevent those falls and how we really want to get those grab bars, you know, into your home before a fall happens. We really want to plan ahead. So what is a grab bar? A grab bar is 
a metal bar that is attached, typically attached to a wall, and it provides assistance and support. So grab bars come in a wide variety of colors, sizes, shapes, and finishes. And we're gonna kind of go through those categories now. So in general, you could pretty much get a grab bar in any color you'd like. Uh, pretty much every color of the rainbow, you could you can find a grab bar in. Uh, so these grab, grab bars are actually pretty special. Uh, they have a silicone coating on them that kind of hides that cool metallic touch that some may experience pain or discomfort or kind of numbness and tingling when touching cold surfaces. So sometimes individuals that may have arthritis or Raynaud's disease, um, they have a hypersensitivity to coolness and that be can become, you know, pretty dangerous when you're, you know, trying to use these bars for support and, you know, your body's interpreting that as pain and you kind of want to just kind of reflex and pull that hand away as if you were touching something, you know, super hot. Uh, as far as finishes go, uh, selecting a finish on a grab bar is pretty simple. Uh, typically, we usually see the stainless steel uh, finish, but there's a, a wide selection and range of different finishes. Um, now, I know kind of selecting a finish may not be as uh, satisfying as maybe, you know, selecting that chocolate that you're going to have from the, the box of chocolates you got for Valentine's Day, or maybe you picked up a, a box of chocolates on sale after Valentine's Day, but there's definitely plenty of options. And unlike chocolates, uh, these grab bars will stick to your hands and keep your hips safe. So here we have some different types of grab bars or different types of grips on the grab bar. Uh, you'll typically see a lot of times in uh, commercial bathrooms that smooth, smooth, um, grab bar, it doesn't have any texture. Um, sometimes though can, those can, can be a little bit slick when they get wet. Uh, most often we typically would recommend the peened type of grip on a grab bar. It has a little bit of texture, um, which can help if you are someone that has decreased sensation in your, in your hands or your fingers. Um, a lot of times we recommend, uh, you know, if you're holding onto a grab bar, you might feel safer having two hands on the bar. Um, and it just gives you that kind of extra texture. And it has these little indentations in the bar. Uh, then you have the knurled and the shore grip. Those are a little bit rougher um, of a pattern and a texture. But it really uh, depends on your comfort. So again, when you're, you know, when we're going in and we're talking to uh, an individual and their family, you know, about installing a grab bar, you always want to kind of, you always want to make sure um, to kind of talk about it and ask, you know, what is their um, feeling in their hands? Are they sensitive? Do they have any sensitivities to cold or to different textures or touch? Um, a lot of times we'll bring different grab bars in um, when we're doing our consultations uh, so they can kind of hold it and feel it and touch it before the actual installation. And here grab bars come in a wide variety of different sizes. Uh, on the left-hand side from 12 to 30, those are kind of your most common uh, lengths. And then uh, typically in more of a commercial type setting, you'll see some of these larger grab bars, 32 uh, uh, inches, uh, inches and over. Um, but there are usually nine standard lengths. All right, so I guess I'm going to take a, a pause here uh, before Ali kind of comes on.
Great. Anybody um, have any questions? Yeah, lots of uh, got a few questions and comments that are are going on. But uh, let's let's um, now. I know th this is a good one just for that can lead into Ali from Mary Boosie. And she says, I've given some thought to installing grab bars, but my shower is so small that I picture myself bumping into them and wearing bruises um, on my skin. So that's, you know, and again, this is where uh, talking about grab bars is a great discussion that might lead into more creative improvements for shower space. Um, so if you guys can give Mary some solutions and then um, this one's not necessarily on grab bars, but I want to read it just because somebody in the audience or you guys might have some suggestions. And Janet says it's not about grab bars, but I hope you can help with a shower equipment question. My brother is a new dialysis patient who was told not to shower ever again in order not to get water and bacteria in his catheter point port, which is located in his upper chest area. Is there some way you can cover up waterproof that port area and safely use a handheld shower to shower safely? So uh, those are a couple of questions as we transition over to Ollie. Yeah, I think um, on the first um, question that, uh, you know, the shower is small. Yeah, we, we experienced this uh, with the other clients as well when they when their shower is too small. Uh, to put anything there, but when I'm going to go through the uh, the next slides uh, of the uh, of the presentation, there are some other things like uh, there are like a soap shelf uh, grab bar rated one that the people can replace whatever shelvings or uh, whatever they have that they keep their shampoos and, and soap in there, so they can replace it with that one to give them some support there. Uh, and also there are some bars that we're going to go through them that are, they're they're uh, foldable, so they fold away when you're not hmm. using. Using them, uh, so there are different ways that we can we can address that. What you know, obviously each each bathroom is different, and we really need to see it. But there are some some solutions for some bathroom may not work for all the small bathrooms. But uh, we've seen some improvement to to use those. And to answer the second question, I do really maybe Melissa has better uh, uh, option for kind of waterproofing that uh, the, the the place that uh, not supposed to get water on. Uh, but you know. I would say maybe walking tops are a good one that you know you can sit in the walking top and uh, there's no really a shower head it's just a handheld shower and shower you know below that area uh, so getting to it like a great shower yeah and but, i dropped janet's question into chat in case somebody in our audience uh might have a solution there um oh also maybe uh you can address this uh in in the discussion joe sperling asked asks are suction cup grab bars okay in a shower um we're going to talk about that we're going to talk okay. about that no, good good so we're part of our presentation we talk about suction cups too yeah and i think uh, i think most important is that uh towel racks are not grab bars uh talk about that as well. correct so, yes okay Door, well, door not, yeah, doorknobs and towel racks, please do not use those to hold on to. And if you have young kids like Ollie and I do, don't let them hang on them, hang on them either. Great. All, All right. right. Well, yeah, let's let's keep on going here. This is great. Okay. Melissa, if you can, yep. So uh, to continue what uh, Melissa was talking about, so there are, as, as Melissa uh, mentioned, there are different kind of shape, uh, I'm sorry, different kind of colors and texture types, but also there are different shapes of the of the grabbers. You can have like I shape, U shape, uh, offset one, uh, you can have a foldable one. Uh, there are multi-purpose one or, uh, that, you know, it's a, like a tabernacle or, or also, there's a suction cup that you know uh, someone asked about it. So we're going to talk about each of go go in deeper in each of them in the next few slides, and we'll show you some examples of of those uh, kind of grab bars. So, so on the right side, you see a typical standard grab bar, which you know we call it like a I shape uh, kind of grab bar, which is like a you know wider U. But to just for the discussion, we call it I shape. Uh, as Melissa said, it comes with two different size, uh, 
variety of sizes and uh, it can some of them can be installed between the two doorways like the, in this example it's between the storm door and a regular door and uh, this is a 12 inch grab bar which is barely can can, can fit two hands on it but we'll, we'll try to install larger one for areas that if you need to put both of your hands on it uh, to to use the grab bar safer uh, the middle one, it's what we call a U-shape, or the other name is a foldable one. So this one can fold up when you're not using it. It's a good for the small areas. And if there are other, maybe you want to pass through that area and you don't want this to be in the way, this one folds up. Uh, also, there's another part, uh, model of the U-shape that it has a legs underneath. So it can, you, for the more, if you want to put more weight on it, so we can have it put a legs underneath. So it's just sit on the ground, on the floor. And uh, it's it's more secure for the for the better you know higher capacity of uh, weight capacity. Mostly these uh, the the U shaped ones we need to put a blocking inside the wall, especially if it doesn't have a leg like this example that it is there. So we uh, this one you can't see the blocking because it's inside the wall. But if some people are under you know tighter budget, we can put the blocking also on on the surface between the two studs. Uh, but you know you you will you will see that. The blocking and blocking will be exposed. The uh, the one on the left that's an L shape, which is kind of do the same thing that the U shape bar does. Then uh, these two kind of grab bars, we install them where there is no wall on to to put on on the side of the toilets most of the time. Uh, and uh, the the L shape just if you don't if it's not on the way you don't need to fold it up. So that's a good option. Mostly we don't need to put blocking. Uh, on those we go to the studs or we use a special anchors and then the other side will be uh, um, <clears throat> bolted to the floor uh, so it gives a very good uh, uh, support and also some of these u-shaped one comes in the uh, with the with the paper towel uh, paper toilet uh, holder as well so it's just one uh, you know, it's like a combo it has everything in it that you don't need to have um, any um, any uh, toilet paper holders. And usually when there's no wall around the toilet, people have to bend to, to reach that toilet paper. Uh, and this one will just have it right next to them uh, that they can use it. So if you can go to the next one. Lisa. So these are the other ones, the T-shaped bar. Uh, it's one that it gives you more, uh, it, it covers more area uh, as far as the support, as you can see, it has like a different height that you can hold on to the, to the bar. And then also as far as horizontal, uh, you have more, uh, you have half or that you have horizontal and vertical uh, to have. You also can install two grab bars uh, because these are usually special uh, grab bars and the pricing usually is higher. Uh, installing two grab bars on like a T-shape would be um, a, a less expensive option. But the only problem is because that you can have, this one has three flanges, the other one has four. So you have another uh, flange that we need to make a holes in your in your tile or on the wall, uh, which that's the only thing that will uh, prevent that. But both of them do the same uh, same thing. And the middle is a it's an offset bar. If we don't have, for example, if you want to have like on the edge of the two walls, we want to have support on both both sides, so we can use those offset, or we cannot install on the wall that we want. There's no support there, and we we can install it on the corner. So then it will give you support on that wall and we install it on the corner. Uh, the, the circular one, which is the, uh, the round one, uh, most, uh, yeah, on the left side, uh, that one, it's usually goes around the faucet, like the example that you see. So that's, a, that's one of the uh, kind of grab bars that it really doesn't uh, look like industrial grab bars and it, it's more uh, can even make your shower looks better when it's there and whenever you want to turn on or off the water is there to help you to to have more support on the next slide uh we're, we're going to see the uh, multi-purpose one uh which is the one that i briefly talk about a uh, small shower that it was a question about so the, the one on the right you can have a this this one is a flat uh shelf that you can put your shampoos in and then all around it you can grip on it it's the it's a grab bar rated one uh, there's another one that it goes even on the corner of the wall, so it takes less room uh, for smaller bathrooms. Uh, this one, it's it, it's just a straight one, but you can get a corner one as well. The middle one, it's uh, the towel rack, which uh, we see at least 90% of the people try to use the regular towel rack as a grab bar when they walk into it. Because when we go to the, to the customer's home, we'll usually bring them to the, the bathroom and ask them, 
just do the normal thing, get into the bathroom, get on the toilet or get into a shower. And we'll almost, as I mentioned, 90% of the people reach for that towel bar to move themselves through the bathroom. And this is really dangerous. And we got a question, so why this towel rack, it's okay to hold on to it, but not the other one. Because this towel rack, is whole, everything is one piece all welded together. There's no separation separation between the parts. But the more, all the grab bar, all the towel bars are not, uh, they are in multiple pieces so they can come off. And also they're not, and they haven't been installed to, to be able to bear a lot of weights. They just installed to have like with the regular anchors, like blue anchors that you put the, you know, art frame on the wall. It's just there for just as much as the towel uh, weight it will bear. It's not gonna bear that, but this is on the top side is a grab bar at the bottom. That's where you want to put your towel in. Some people want to save money. They use just a regular I-shaped grab bar as a towel rack as well, which that works as well. Uh, the other one on the left side, it's the towel. Uh, it's the uh, toilet paper holder, which is again, the grab bar rated is a one piece, uh, uh, one piece material. It's not multiple pieces, so it's never going to fall apart. Uh, we'll install that and that's a really popular and common one. And instead of having the regular uh, toilet paper, you can have that one again. It doesn't look like a grab bar. It doesn't have to look industrial, which a lot of people have a uh, problem with that, that the grab bar. It, it's something that is very industrial and it's to make their bathroom inattractive, inattractive. But as Melissa showed earlier, there are a variety of different things that you can do if you don't want to have that look uh, in your bathroom. Suction cup. I know that a lot of people likes them because you don't want any contractors in your home and you can just buy it offline online or go to the, any pharmacy to buy that. And I, still amazed how these products still can be sold in the United States because these are cannot, you know, people, I, I, when I argue with people about this, they, they hold on and then just move on a seat. It's strong. Yeah, it's strong when you do that. But when you falling, when you need the extra support that to hold on something that prevents you from the fall, you put multiple of your weight on that bar. And I'm guarantee you that this not going to bury it. And I, yeah, one time I, the client was like, this is good. And I pulled pull the grab bar and it came off. And I had customers that they call us saying that they had a suction cup and they fall because the suction cup didn't stay. So we had to go and, and change it. So please do not use them. If you, if you are, a, if you're someone that using grab bar yourself and you have one of these in your bathroom, please take them off and put a real grab bar. And if you, if you, if you see it in your client's home, if you're a professional you see in your client's home that they use something, uh, the, the suction grab bars, really talk with them and tell them, you know, in my opinion, not having them there, it's better to have them because you rely on something that is not reliable and it can fail. So suction cups are not, in, in our book, it's not welcome. So that's not a guess that, as Melissa said, to stay in your home, that, that gets me, gets me to, to leave the house immediately. Other type of grab bars, which is a very interesting grab, uh, type, that it's uh, it was a, a innovated in Germany, and uh, now we are they're selling in the United States, and we use them. So these are with no drilling, so there's no penetration in your wall. If you have a freshly new remodeled bathroom and you don't want to put it in there, or if there's if you need a grab bar temporary, which again I I don't agree that the grab bar can be temporary, grab bar is going to come and stay, no matter what age you are. And, you know, even my daughter, she's five, and in, in our previous home, they, we had a, a, a shower that the previous owner had a uh, grab bar, and we never removed it because she used it whenever we want to wash her foot or she was holding on. When we moved to another, another house, she was asking where she's going to hold on to it when we want to wash her feet. So it's a, it's a regardless of age, I think grab bars are good the good uh, kind of uh, improvement to your bathroom. So this one, this kind of uh, grab bar, it's it's done with the glue, which it's a two-day process. Uh, one day we're going to put the glue in with the with the um, little mold that it comes with it, and then second day we'll come back and install it. But we have to be very careful when to where to put these. We want to make sure the the wall and the surface that we put on itself it's safe and sound. So. 
they they claiming that you can put it on a plaster, you can put it on the on the uh, on the drywall. But if if that plaster comes off, or the paper on the on the wall comes off, or you have a wallpaper on the wall that comes off, it come the the the, uh, the gravel will come off with it, with it as well. So we mostly recommend it and install it when we make sure that the wall it's really strong. The tile is on it. It's not 20 years, 25 years old tile that it can come off the wall with the gravel. So it's good for the new new bathrooms if they have a stone or if they have marble or 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 tile th those are good and then there's a way to remove them when you don't need them and clean off the residue off of it so it's a it's a very interesting product but it's a two-day work uh two-day uh work and uh we have to examine the wall the surfaces that we can install it. so there's a little video that uh, uh we're going to play this is something that for can work for the small areas as well that, that it goes away when you're not when you don't need it or if you want to get more support and, and cover more areas this is from healthcraft that they make very good good products uh, maybe a lot of you heard about a super pole that that's what they they do as well which we're going to talk about it later it's not a grab bar but it can be replaced as a grab bar if we cannot do it so let's look at this video the Dependabar is a complete and innovative bath and shower support system. This product provides centralized support to keep you safe during transfers and bathing motions. It features Healthcraft's pivot and lock technology. With five positions placed every 45 degrees, the bar easily lifts up, moves away from the wall, and locks into place where support is needed. For independence and confidence in your bathroom, Choose the Dependabar by Healthcraft. So, um, you know, again, we're, there are a lot of products out there, so we can just touch most of the popular one, but there are other things that are out there. So the Super Bowl or Super Bar, there are two different products that they, they offer that you can, instead of putting, putting the grab bars on your wall, like, like this example, if in front of the toilet, you need more support right because a lot of people like to have support in front of them to get off of the toilet they, they can use on anything on their side so that's something that you can have it and the bar can pivot around if you look at on the left page with the bed so this uh, this can be can be moved around and lock in a place and uh, you can get it without or with or on the right side you can see a different kind of bar on it uh, and you can, if you have like, for example, in a middle middle picture that you can see, you can use it for a toilet. This one doesn't have the pivot bar, but if it had a pivot bar, you can move it even into the shower area to, to have it there for, for you to get up from the chair that you have in there or, or give you more support in the, in the bathroom as well. This one will, it has a mechanism that it, there's no drilling on the floor. It goes, but the pressure sits on the floor and then we just uh, bolt it into your, uh, to your joist or any, any structural, uh, element in your ceiling so that doesn't do any damages and you know repairing a drywall or plaster on the ceiling it's very inexpensive to do it so it's not like that you do the tile um, penetration and it's really expensive to change that tile so that's why the previous product that we showed you for the, uh, the no drilling one that's good for it's it's much cheaper to, to put a put a hole into the tile and then go repair it so let's go to the next one so where we want, mostly where we want to get the grab bar. There are mostly in the bathroom. That's the first place that we usually see. In the doorways that we see that usually there's a step in the doorway that we install in the middle. There's nothing else can be in the middle so people can pull their stuff out because most of the houses, especially in our area, at least it has one step to the door because of the snow uh, that we want. They want to make sure that the snow doesn't come all the way to your door. So we all, most of the houses has a step to the door. So that's a very good solution to put a grab bar between the two doors um, in the bedroom, by the, by the bed, anywhere in the kitchen, anywhere that you need extra support. So it's good to, to have that um, um, on, the, uh, uh, on the areas that you want. So um, as, as Melissa mentioned, most of the, uh, um, most of the grab bar are wall mounted. They're usually installed between 33 to 36 inch height from the floor, but this is a guideline from ADA, and but we don't follow that when we are in the, in, in the individual's house. We always do because we have some people like shorter than average or people like taller than average. So 
we'll always bring them in, as I mentioned, we'll bring them in, we'll have them to see where it's comfortable for them to put it in, what if should we put it vertical, horizontal, or diagonal, uh, we'll talk about them, uh, how to put it in, and uh, then we're going to go through see how we're going to secure it. Are we going to go into the wall stud? Are they studs where we want them? So if you want to follow the studs, we can't have them where the client wants. So we're not going to follow the studs. Uh, and we're going to either going to do a, a reinforcement of the wall or we're going to use special anchors. There are a variety of the anchors that we can bear uh, weight uh, up to 250 each. So we usually put four of them on each each grab bar. So basically, we're, it's about thousand pounds but no one's going to put a thousand pounds on it and i think the drywall will break or the tile will break before you reach that thousand pound because as i mentioned you put multiple of your weight when you are falling on the grab bar but when you want to just st stabilize yourself and give some mobility uh, some balance you're not going to put that much weight on it unless that you are really uh doesn't have that ability to to hold the weight hold, hold your own weight Go to the next, please. Uh, there are two different showers usually we see, fiberglass showers and tile showers. So fiberglass showers, typically we do not want to put any grab bars unless there is either drywall behind them, which 90% of the fiberglass showers, they don't have drywall behind them. They are usually directly installed onto the studs. Uh, or if we can find the studs where we want it and have, you know, well, the, uh, the position that we want to install the grab bar. Or if we have to reinforce it, if we have access from the back of the back of the shower, so we open up the wall from the back and put a blocking, or if we are installing from scratch, so we want to put the uh, blocking inside of, uh, behind the shower before we install it. We install a lot of fiberglass showers, barrier-free showers, that it's really uh, the fastest way to convert the bath up to the bathroom to the uh, to the walk-in shower that no no lip in there and we put those there and if it's a tile shot tile walls if we can go to the stud very good if we cannot there are several as i mentioned anchors that we can use which we're going to have a more example in the next slide so yeah so as you can see this is the, this is one of the projects that uh we were doing the fiberglass shower so we put the blocking all around so we have the freedom where we want to put them and then the blocking that's about i think 10 inch or eight to 10 inch high. So it gives us a very good range of movement of the, where we want to install the gravels, but definitely we we measure the clients and we knew where about they wanted to want the gravels. So we put all, all the blocking there. And this one can can bear a thousand pounds if for hundred percent sure. And uh, those are the, uh, the some kind of the, uh, the, uh, the anchors that we use that it goes behind the, behind the tile and it opens up. So it gives a very good uh, uh, strength for that grab bar that it's going to install in there. So it's, it gives you a very good uh, support for, for the grab bar. So uh, again, grab bars were going to stay. So why? Because it's going to give you independence. Uh, you're going to be uh, uh, you can do maybe taking showers independently or at least don't do not have that fear that you're going to fall in the shower. A lot of people, they don't, a lot of older adults or people with disability, they don't take shower because they they don't feel safe. They don't feel, you know, when I talk with them, so I don't want to go in that shower because if I fall, I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. But if you give them a grab bar and they, they know that there's something there, they want to have one hand at least, want to grab bars when they, when they move around or, or, you know, want to change their position, they know that there's something there that is going to hold them to not fall. So it gives them some security and assurance that they can do that shower by themselves. Or even if they have a caregiver there, still they know that there's something that is going to support them to not fall. So the mobility is matters. To, I think everybody mobility is matter, and then the way that we position the position the grab bars are to, different from person to person. So as I mentioned, the heights, the way that we do, for example, in, in this example, there's a horizontal and vertical. So vertical is usually place where you want to lift your foot to go into the top. So you want to have an extra support and usually we want to put it to size that you can put two hands on. The one at the back, we put it horizontal, which also can be done uh, diagonal. When the people are different, some people like to push and get up and some people like to pull their self and get up. So if they want to pull their self, 
So we're going to put it on diagonal one. If they want to just push, we're going to do it on the vertical side. And then the size can be, we can talk about it where they want to usually stand or sit. Uh, we usually try to cover the whole back wall, which in this example it is, because the seat is going to cover the first part, and then they're not going to go all the way to the wall. Next, please. So the weight, which talk about a weight, usually they say the grab bar needs to be weighted 250 pounds for a regular person. If they are on, uh, overweight, so obviously we need to put blocking and we need to think about have, have a larger uh, grab bar. Diameters, there are two different diameters in, in, uh, in uh, grab bars. One is one and a half and is one and quarter. One and quarter is usually used in residential and one and a half, it's more uh, on a commercial size. We have clients that they have like a larger hands so we use the one and a half, what 99% of the people in the residential customers, we install um, the uh, uh, one and quarter. We talk about a reinforcement. We, we always want to have a, um, a reinforcement. We talk about a position, how we want to position it. This is kind of break it down that you know what, what you have to look for it when you want to talk with someone without a grab bar. So how to start a grab bar process? First, talk with your doctor and therapist and see if you need one. Again, I think everybody can benefit out of, from, from grab bar. Then talk with your home modification consultant, someone like us, that we have certifications that we took that we can to totally understand what you need and what your needs in and how and where to put it in, how to position it. Identify the areas that you want to you want to put in. So we want to say where, where the weakness are, the, the areas that you have weakness that you can you can install. And then we can you can see what kind you want, what grips you want, what kind of texture you want. So these are the things that you want to talk about it. Then at the end, it will give you the assurance and the security that you can go into the shower or to your bathroom or even toileting. So you, you want to have extra support to do those. And in in, we showed you the most popular one in the in, uh, previous slide. So you have a good understanding of this, uh, what you want and how you want and where you want to position it. Let's go to the next. So, you know, if whenever you're ready to 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 have the grab bars again, uh, you want to uh, know this that it's going to prevent injuries. It's going to give you confidence. It's going to uh, reduce the risk of fall. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's a it's an insurance policy that you don't need to renew it. And uh, you know, if I tell someone I want to give you insurance that you you have it for a lifetime and you don't need to renew it, I think everybody's going to jump on it which this is, is because it's a fraction of what, what, what is going to happen. So I encourage everybody to, to have grab bars in their home, regardless of ability. And good example about my parents that they, uh, they didn't want it, but I put it in and the next day my mom calls it. I'm, I'm glad that you put it in. Steve, we are almost done with it. So let's go to the slide. I know we are right at the hours. So our team, uh, we have all the teams that, you know, we have engineers, we have uh, a lot of consultants that they are aging in place consultants and then also can, can work with people with disability. We have designers, we have architects. So we have a whole team of the people that they can work with you in any project that you have. You don't have to, you know, call anybody else. We have everybody understand you. And uh, as, as I mentioned, so we are certified. We have different certifications uh, in the uh, we're here to talk and if you need any help or any consultation, we're more than happy to talk with you. It's not gonna cost you any dime to talk with us. So I would encourage you to talk with us or any home uh, improvement, like a home modification consultant. Great. Um, this is fantastic. Uh, and hopefully it opened people's eyes that number one, even though in a lot of the photos, the grab bars are stainless steel, there are a lot of different options besides the sort of more institutional looking grab bars. And that leads into the question. It says, our clients have stylish and nicely decorated homes, which they take great pride in. They don't want to add grab bars to their home. What are some of your conversation starters? And you know, this goes even over and above, like it's many of our clients still have these thick uh, throw rugs, you, you know, that are tripping hazards for people of all ages. Um, and it's really, uh, yeah, what, I'm, I'm curious, what kind of dialogue starters uh, have helped? Um, and, and probably, 
I think one of the biggest things is people just don't realize that there's so many choices in grab bars that they don't need to to look like a hospital. Exactly. So the, you know all the products that we had pictures. You know, yeah, you're right. The the, the real pictures that we show because you know, that's most of most of people that want that because they got to the to the point that they have no other choice and they don't care at that point you know they already fall fell and they broke their hip they they really at that point they don't care they want something there to to take that fear away from them because they already experienced it they don't want to experience it again so but if someone looking ahead and and thinking that they want to do it before this thing happened as we show there are a lot of we have samples that we take to them we show them pictures we we have a like a, a color chart of the grab bars that they can pick. Uh, they can look at it, we show them pictures that it's not gonna be, the grab bar, it, it, it looks like a grab bar, obviously it's not gonna change unless we go with the other uh, type that we show like a uh, tablet bars or, or toilet paper holders. Those are, you cannot even tell it's a grab or the yeah. shelf, the shampoo yeah, shelf, it doesn't say. But if they want a traditional looking grab bars that we, uh, as far as the, 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 the eye shape one, then there are different colors that they can even have to put an accent in their bathroom, for example, makes them even nicer. Or the, the one that there's no require any drilling. If they don't want to drill in their you know expensive tile, we have that option for them. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Kim Karlachak says you mentioned grab bars should withstand a 250 pound person. How about somebody who weighs 300 pounds? And I think you also mentioned when you install them, you they can withstand a force of a thousand pounds did i we hear put that them correctly? there it depends on what what material is there so the 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 fasteners that we put in it can bear up to thousand pounds but again we have to make sure the wall can bear that thousand pounds. right so if someone weighs 350 pounds 400 pounds we 100 percent will gonna put a blocking behind the wall because if we cannot go to the stud if we go to the stud we can do it because the grab bars that we buy they're not the one that we buy from home depot and, and other you know hardware store we buy them from the specialty manufacturer that they only make grab bars and they rate their grab bars thousand pounds. So the grab bar can bear that, but it's a question is if the wall can bear that kind or not. But if we go to the start or if we will be able to reinforce the wall, then yeah, definitely for someone on a higher you know weight, uh, we'll, we're not gonna take chance just use an anchor there. Okay, and then Brad um, in comments says, uh, Brad Martin says, when remodeling a bathroom, is it wise to put three fourth inch plywood completely around your toilet and shower area? That way, no matter where you drill, you would hit wood. Uh, if, if any, if someone want to do this, I would recommend to put like at least two inch, uh, inch and a half wood, three quarters steel, and especially plywood. Plywood, it's very fragile. It can, it, because it's not a real wood. So I would recommend like put a, two by, you know, we usually put two by eight or two by 10, which is about a one inch and a half thickness. Uh, even, even one inch thick real wood will help, uh, but the thicker it is better. And it, it depends on a person's weight, but you know, obviously the, definitely the, the plywood will help, but if they're gonna take that step to do it, I would do a better kind of wood instead of plywood. Yeah, and, and Becky Wright followed up with that comment and sh she said, uh, adding plywood or even two by 12, or even two by 12 inch walls for future insulation is a great idea. We'll save homeowners lots of money in the long run. Remember to take photos so you know where your blocking is located. That's probably, if you are remodeling and you're not up to doing these improvements, which I totally disagree with. I mean, I think one of the, one of the, the concepts that everybody in Ollie and Melissa's space and everybody in the safe and accessible home space says is, if you're doing any remodeling in your home, you've got contractors in there, set it up so that this can be a home for a lifetime and, and make it make it safe and accessible. It It's not, these grab bars are not just for you. They could be for a, a family member that visits. Your kid could get injured and, and has difficulty getting in and out of a shower, playing their sports or what have you. So um, this makes a lot of sense. It's just, we're, it, it can be difficult for people to make these types of improvements because they assign these improvements with being disabled, but it's um, universal design. It makes life easier for everybody. Um, uh, let's see. Joanne Lynn is 
still wondering about the suction cup grab bars. So just reiterate your stance on these suction cup grab bars. And they're not, they're, the suction grab bars are not gonna hold even, they, they rated what, what they say is 100 pounds. So I don't know any, you know, there are maybe few people that weigh 100 pounds if, if they are older. So, you know, I think average person weighed about 160 to 200 pounds. Uh, and when you are falling, you're putting multiple of that weight on that grab bar. So if they say it's rated 100 pounds, so that means it's not gonna even bear your, you know, your, your weight. When you are falling, you're gonna you need more than what you what you weigh. So that's a good reason. If you read the label, that's a, that gives you a very good reason to not use them. But they're they're not there to stay. They come off. And I had clients that they said even they fall by itself without even any force. Like they're, the 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 the, the grab bar were there, and the next day they were they they found it on the ground on, on the floor. So I I don't risk it, and I'm not gonna you know ask I, again if you have it. They're not, they're not really grab bars. They are and there that, to keep your balance, probably. That, that's all it can be. Yeah, and let's see. I'm, I'm going through here. Uh, oh, um, Kathleen Holm says, do you, does your organization have any expands to exp plans to expand to Colorado? And I think, um, but more importantly, you can probably, if Kathleen, if you wanted to reach out to Ali or uh, Melissa, if if their organization is not in Colorado, they can connect you with some certified professionals in Colorado. And and I think that's that's one thing that I've found. And there's a few comments that that reiterate this is, is that, for example, we all have our home handymans and our contractors that we you know put our back deck on and we like we've got a relationship with them and we like to use them. But if, if a contractor is installing a grab bar for the very first time, it's going to take them longer and it's and they may not install it correctly, even though there's a skilled contractor. And so I find that it's in, in people's best interest to consult with individuals like Ali and Melissa. And, you know, there's no reason why you can't have a home remodeling project have multiple contractors. Um, but but trust somebody who has who's knowledgeable about all the resources that are out there and then has done this before. Absolutely. You know, we we've seen handyman handyman person or or con regular contractor, they they may do a beautiful job, but because they don't have a knowledge how to do it and where to do it. So we've seen people put a put a grab bars with a blue anchor, which is not for, for putting a grab bar. And you know, recently we are we are part of this project with Louis Tenenbaum that uh, yeah, he's developing an app for NIH by, by NIH support that it will te it will inspect the installation of the grab bar. It will recommend where to put the grab bar and it will inspect the installation of the grab bar automatically through the app. So they make sure that that is, that is installed correctly. So it is important that NIH is, is funding this project to make sure all the grab bars are installed, installed correctly with the right anchor and right position and everything that it needs to be done. So that's, we are part of that for, uh, you know, process. We are very thrilled that uh, Louis Tenenbaum uh, chose us to do this, but we are part of the uh, review of that, that app uh, with, with them. And uh, I, 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 I quote Louis Tenenbaum regularly. He's one of the pioneers in this space, but I remember, uh, hearing him speak at a panel and somebody said, well, where do I put the grab bars? And, and Lewis says, the first thing that I look for is fingerprints, where you're looking for leverage in a space. That's a great place to throw a grab bar. Um, let's see. Um, let's see how, okay. How does one include this type of service in regular home renovation projects to consider future needs that I, I think, you know, I recommend, you know, reaching out to Ali and Melissa, we've got other safe and accessible providers in Sourcebook. Um, and in addition to your regular contractors, okay, so talk to a few people, the more people you talk to, the more perspective, and then you can make make a choice. 
Um, are th uh, as I mentioned, we are a full construction company. So if they're not, if as you mentioned, if they don't have their own contractor that they really want to work with them, they can consult with us. So we can do it A to Z. To do all the, the home improvement. Yeah. I, I have um, the universal design in mind. And so we can do it. We have, we do a full, we are a full construction company, but we are only focusing on people with disability and, yep. and aging in place. And then Joe Sperling says, are there grab bars that are more decorative looking like front door handles? And I, uh, we did, Joe, we shared uh, um, some images of that, but there are, now there are grab bars with every coating and decorative uh, feature under the sun. Um, and let's see, oh, Lewis is here. This is awesome. And he says, like Ali, many designers and contractors have interest knowledge and or other certification in these areas. If the folks you're dealing with are not interested or amenable, find somebody else. And um, Kathleen Hume says, wing it's, I've never heard of those, are great, a great option if there is not a stud or backing. That's the one that we had a picture in, in, in into the presentation. Yeah, that's one oh, of the that's, answers. Okay. And um, let's see, uh, my brother. Okay, my brother in Jupiter, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, has balance issues and needs to connect with professionals like you to help with grab bars. Can you refer to me to someone? And yeah, we have um, a location there. So if you if they can contact with us, we can put them in contact with them. Okay. And my email address is very easy. It's a l i at handypro.com. It's my first name at handypro, and Melissa is melissa at handypro.com. So if you email either of us, we'll put you in contact with those locations that you're looking for. Excellent. Wow. I just looked at the clock, and it's uh, it's one oh seven. I'm glad we recorded this for anybody that had to drop off, but um, this doesn't surprise me because. Anytime we do a, a discussion on safe and accessible homes, it goes over an hour. Um, and I think this is a great idea, kind of breaking off just one aspect of safe and accessible homes at a time. So maybe we follow up with this and we just focus on, you, you know, entryways or bathrooms or kitchens or what have you, and we can kind of put together an, an interesting series there. But uh, um, Melissa and Ali, thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much for, oh, there was, there was a comment on low income programs. Uh, somebody from Johns Hopkins, I, I meant to read this. So Tara says, are there grants for low limited income people who can't afford um, improvements like this, but need them? Uh, I, I think there's yes. one in DC, right? Um, there are on each Everywhere. That they are. Yeah. Can, yeah, there's definitely multiple can, funding options um, and I'm happy to provide resources. Uh, you wanna reach out by email or by phone. Um, there's also tax credits. Um, Great, so uh, Tara. Yeah, Tara, if you want to reach out to Ali and Melissa, um, hopefully they can connect you. It looks like I think she's in she's with Johns Hopkins in Washington County. Um, so um, anyways. All right. Well, thank you to the two of you. Thank you to our audience once again for their um, uh, for your great questions and engagement. And uh, we'll see you all next week. So much, Steve, for the opportunity. Thank you, Steve. And thanks, everybody, to tune in today.